Hi, my name is Alvaro Ramirez and I, I'm a video analyst for America on Watch. Hi, I'm Alejandro Salas and I am uh, work for a can analyst and I'm a alarm dispatcher. Hi, I'm Eric Guadalupe and I work for Google. Hi everyone, thank you for coming. My name is Madison Baltadano and today I'm going to be presenting information on family life and political patterns in Saudi Arabia. Why should you care about this? Saudi Arabia is miles away and why is it important to know about other countries and their cultures? A very important reason is that you'll sound educated in current events when you talk about them in a business setting or in a personal setting. It's also important so that you can understand and appreciate the differences between other countries, cultures, and our culture. And lastly, you can value certain aspects of your culture that you previously may have taken for granted. Family life is going to be the first topic that I'll be talking about, and in this topic I'll be talking about family, children, marriage, men, and women. Family is very important in Saudi Arabia. It is one of the main uh, main sources of identity and social status. It is essential to social institution, an essential social institution, and families are patrilineal. This means that the father is the head of the family and he has control over the family and makes, makes most of the decisions. Children are legally thought to be, lo be owned by their father in Saudi Arabia. Because of this, fathers can separate the children from the mother at a young age if they wish to do so. However, that is very uncommon and most of the time children are raised by either their mother or a foreign nanny. Marriage was traditionally held between first cousins. Today it is typically held between two unrelated people. It was traditionally arranged and the couple would meet for the first time on their wedding night. However, today it is still arranged, but the couple will normally be familiar with each other. Marriage is not a religious sacrament, it is a civil contract, and that contract stipulates how much the uh, husband is going to pay to marry the wife. Men are allowed to have up to four wives in Saudi Arabia, as long as each wife is treated equally. They are allowed to initiate a divorce, however, women are not allowed to do this. Divorce is very common in Saudi Arabia. Wives join the husbands in their households with their family where the wife is supervised by the mother-in-law. Sons inherit twice as much from their family wealth as daughters do, and women and men are segregated from each other. Men also hold more social and political power. Women keep their father's last name after marriage because women are still thought to be legally owned by their father. They are allowed to retain control over personal property, which helps them in case of divorce so that they can still support themselves. Women, however, are not allowed to drive, which is a big, big burden on them. Women are allowed to work in any position that does not uh, involve interaction with unrelated men. There are certain uh, work markets, such as female schools or female banks, where only women are employed. Because women and men are not allowed to interact, women are extremely dependent on their male relatives. Now that we've talked about family life, I'm going to be talking about political patterns. So this topic will cover the government, the king's roles, institutions, and media in Saudi Arabia. The government in Saudi Arabia is a monarchy. It has a king that comes from the royal bloodline, and the next king will be a son of the current king. There aren't any political parties in Saudi Arabia, however the political family, which consists of 20,000 people, does have significant influence in the government. The government in Saudi Arabia has been stable over the past few decades, even with extreme growth. The king has many different roles. Uh, he is the head of state and government. He is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces and the head of the Court of Appeal with pardoning power. Basically, whatever the king says goes. Institutions in Saudi Arabia, the Royal Divan is the Court of Appeals where citizens are allowed to come and make claims or actions. The Royal Divan is made up of the king and his many advisors. 
The executive branch of the government is the Council of Ministers, and this includes the king, the prince, and heads of the country. The Koran, which is comparable to the Western Bible, is the country's constitution. And Sharia is the justice system in Saudi Arabia. It spells out uh, exactly what punishments should happen if for a certain crime. Most of the punishments are physical punishments that are meant to be uh, displayed in public in order to shame the family's name. Media in Saudi Arabia does not have a formal censorship on it. However, um, writers do self-censor the newspapers because there is an unwritten code. The Ministry of Information, uh, they monitor the newspapers and if somebody crosses this unwritten code, they will be punished for it. The code includes uh, writing against the government. Saudi Arabia also ha broadcasts TV and radio stations. They broadcast them both in English and in Arabic. Now that you know about the family life and political patterns in Saudi Arabia, you can appreciate the dissimilarities of the cultures and the diversity that it brings to our world. You can value certain aspects of our own cultures. For example, if we were in Saudi Arabia today, I would not be allowed to interact with any of you since I'm female and you're male. We can also respect Saudis that we encounter living in the United States or elsewhere and understand the difficulties that they're going through with coping with our, with our different culture. These are my references, and if anybody would like a copy of my presentation, please let me know and I can email it to you. Thank you very much.